Hey guys, Sean C. Phillips here with a brand new DVD Blu-ray Tuesday Sean Bear today. Take a go out today, see what things came out, see what things are on sale. I know today though some of the big releases that come out is How to Train Your Dragon, The Hidden World. I know there's a number of retail exclusives of that one that come out. Like I think Target has, I believe, like a digi book. Best Buy has a steel book. Other than that though, today, uh, the movie uh, Isn't It So Romantic, that one releases today, as well as the film The Upside. But also though, at the end of this video, I'm gonna have a whole bunch of brand new DVD and Blu-ray reviews for some things I received to review and talk about for you guys. Some really, really cool stuff. And as always, too, let me know in the comments below what you guys thought of the DVDs and Blu-rays that I reviewed. If you guys have seen any of them, and if you guys plan on picking them, you know, any of them up, and what you know, what you guys thought of them. But anyway, guys, let's get going and see what we can find today. Into Walmart we go. And I'm in Walmart first today. I just came from Target and like they literally like they had all the spots But literally nothing was out in the shelf all the spaces were empty for the new releases So nothing in there so I gotta go to Target next and hopefully the other location has out the stuff But in here today though for how to train your dragon the hidden world They have an exclusive edition here, which has these little mini uh, Funko pop keychains of the dragon characters in here So that's pretty cool. That one is $29.99 for that edition of that the uh, 4k edition here is $29.99 96 as well and then the standard edition uh, blu-ray is uh, $24.96 and then the DVD is a uh, $19.96 they also have this collection here I think this looks like it's DVD I think there might be a blu-ray of that one as well I'm not sure though it has all three of the movies together that one's $29.96 also today though the upside came out which I really like this one this is a remake of the movie the Intouchables and um this one, though, I thought Kevin Hart did a really good job because this is like a real heavy drama, like really different kind of role for him. And he's take, taking care of this guy who was paralyzed. And it's like kind of he's his like caretaker for him. And he doesn't really know what he's doing or anything. And it's kind of about them becoming friends and everything. It's just really, really well done. Really like that one. The original one was, it was really good as well. But I thought this one was pretty much just as good for the most part. And like I said, performance-wise, Brian Cranston was great. Everybody was really good in that one. Also, though, this one here came out to and it says only at Walmart so I guess this one is only getting a blu-ray and a DVD release in Walmart only I'm guessing it looks like it yeah because I didn't even know this one was coming out today this one called like I said run the race but um that one's $17.96 for that one for the uh, Blu-ray and then $14.96 for the DVD. So I guess both editions of that are exclusive to here. Also though, uh, Isn't It Romantic, that one released today. And I'll have a review of that one, my video on next, next week. That one just arrived so I didn't get to get this, you know, that one in this video. But I actually like this one as well. This is like, um, you know, Rebel Wilson's character bumps her head and then like... Um, when she wakes up in the hospital, she's in this um, kind of like, you know, a, a romantic comedy movie. And her whole life is like changed and she's like the real popular girl. And it's kind of her figuring out what's going on. But it was actually a really fun movie. It's from the director who did the movie The Final Girls. That one's uh, $22.96 for that. And then uh, $15.96 for the DVD. And then also, though, the only other things today that I see that are new are um, Big Brother. That one released the Donnie Yen film. That one's $12.96 for the DVD. And then the uh, John Travolta movie for $17.96, Trading Paint. That released. As well as this one that looks kind of interesting for $12.96. This Alec Baldwin, Selma Hayek movie, Drunk Parents. So I've not seen much about this one. I might get this one. I don't know. I have to look online and see. I think it's directed by Fred Wolf, who I think might have directed Bucky Larson. I think, which I, you know, I know people didn't like that movie, but I always really liked Bucky Larson. It was just like a really goofy, ridiculous movie. But other than that over here, I don't see anything else different over here, though. And I was actually wrong. That was not the director of Bucky Larson. He was like the director of like House Bunny and Strange Wilderness. But you know, I was looking at the reviews. They weren't great for drunk parents. But if you guys have seen that movie, let me know if that one's worth buying because I'll get it next week. Because like I don't know, I'm just, I don't really know much at all about it, and the reviews don't look that great. Into Target we go. And this location actually has a standee out for the movie. Now, um, the standard edition Blu-ray is, uh, you know, $24.99 for that one. And then the uh, 4K is $29.99. But over here, though, they have the exclusive of this one. And their exclusive is, and oh, it's not actually a digibook. I was wrong about that. It has a um, wearable dragon wings. So it has these kind of wings that you can, like, wear. And I guess they're in here. I don't know if they're made out of, like, cloth 
or what they're made in, but that's kind of an interesting thing. That edition, though, that has the dragon wings is a Blu-ray edition, and that one's $27.99 for that. And then also, though, they have Isn't It Romantic? That one here is um, $22.99 for that one. And then the upside here is uh, $24.99. But we'll head over to the section as well to see if they have anything else different in the actual section. But over here though in the actual section, the only thing different that I see is they have drunk parents here as well. That one's a $14.99 for that one. Into the quality resale store we go. So we'll take a look and see what's new in here. In here all this stuff is $2.99 or $4 for $9.99. I feel like this was cheaper when I first started coming here, but I might be totally wrong about that. But I have in here in the past come across some interesting out of print things in here. This company though, I don't think they exist anymore. This Platinum, I believe they were the one that put out that movie Meet the Hollow Heads, which is like one, I, this one of like my, my favorite like strange movies. And if you guys ever come across it, it's one I highly recommend you guys check out called Meet the Hollow Heads, but you don't see it too much. And that's one of those ones I always hope at some point, you know, gets a DVD, I mean, you know, a Blu-ray release. It's some point because it's just such a strange movie this is one of these snow white ones this is like they, they made a i think this might have been one of the ones that was from canon yeah canon a movie tale i'll have to look this one up if this one's out of print my favorite are these canon uh, movie tale ones this was done the same time that shelly duvall you know had the fairy tale theater one but then canon was doing like full-length movies and shelly duvall's ones i think were only like 30 minutes or an hour or so but my favorite of these uh canon ones was the hansel and gretel, gretel one that was like as a kid i watched that one so many times I'm going to go and look through all this stuff in here and see if there's anything different. I have found some interesting TV shows here in the past, but not, not too much in here in a while. This is one of those shows I surprisingly never actually watched one single episode of Smallville. I don't know how. It's like one of those uh, shows that somehow I never really saw. A lot of these things like this, like, um, you know, Buffy, I never saw an episode of that. And I really don't know, know how I never did. It's like it's really weird how there's certain things I never really saw, you know, when they were on. And then never really, you know, saw any episodes later on of them. But like I said, going to look through here and see if I come across anything in here different today. But I have seen some out-of-print things here in the past. Like randomly, I've come across some interesting out-of-print stuff. So like another company, Image, every so often some of their stuff is really rare and obscure. But I think the rarest thing I ever found in here was a um, like a Christian Bale movie that was from Anchor Bay. Because with Anchor Bay, and Anchor Bay is one of those other companies when it comes to out-of-print kind of obscure stuff you know some of their stuff is just really generic and you see it all the time and then some of them can be really you know uh, rare because when people who always ask to me too like in the comments and everything when it comes to out of print like how do I know really pretty much I, I don't like there's certain titles where I kind of know oh yeah that one is one of those ones like a movie called like Mikey and certain movies I kind of know but uh, other ones like if I see something that looks kind of obscure that I don't you know see too often or you know recognize seeing too often stores I just look it up on I look usually on Amazon and uh, you know eBay and sometimes Amazon's prices can be totally wrong so you kind of have to check like a couple different spots to see like with like HBO titles some of those can be really uh, valuable like uh, Dr. Jekyll and Mrs. Hyde that's one of those like super obscure ones but this is another one that I would love if some point got a blue release the Pippi Longstocking one this is another one of those things that as a kid I watched this thing so many times like I can't even Matt tell you how many times I watched that movie as a kid and love the songs and that but but over here though this would be a really cool thing if this was the you know limited edition version of the Star Wars trilogy because the, the limited edition one includes uh, a bonus disc for each of the films that has the original theatrical cuts of the movies and this you know like I said it was only $9.99 so it definitely would be a good price if it was the limited one because I'm always looking for that one you know and hoping that they would someday release that on blu-ray but from the sound of it it doesn't sound like you know they're ever planning on releasing those ones but I feel like they would really sell well if they did put out those limited ones because I feel like a lot of people really would love to see those ones you know without any of the changes or anything but like I said just going to keep looking through here and see if we can find anything else interesting here today yeah but not really seeing anything in here that different today they do have this thing here it's like just a bunch of loose CDs and stuff in here I remember I found in here once loose clown house which is a really obscure one to come across but 
never really would get any of these kind of loose ones unless it was really something obscure but yeah like I said look through all the stuff in here today didn't really come across anything that different but you never know every so often though you can come across something really different and this past weekend, the only movie that I saw in theaters was John Wick Chapter 3. Now this is one of those movies where I will say, if you guys have not seen the other two John Wick films, this is a situation where you 100%, you know, really, really should see those ones first because this one throws back to characters in those ones. And this one, you know, picks up directly after, like seconds after the second movie ends. So it's one of those situations where if you didn't see the other ones, you'd be really lost on certain characters and stuff like that and what they're kind of talking about in a lot of scenes. So definitely, like I said, make sure you see those ones first. But movie-wise, though, you know, with these films, they're really all about the action. And they, you know, have went to these amazing levels with this one, like these insane choreographed scenes with Keanu Reeves with all these people. And I really like that, you know, Halle Berry's character that comes in the film because he has these dogs. And the stuff they did with these dogs was absolutely crazy. But like I said, they really have done an amazing job, though, just continuously up in the action and getting crazier and crazier and crazier because like when you look back at the first film it hardly seems as crazy action wise compared to like where they've gotten to now I will say though with this one story wise though I feel like the story in the second film is the one that I, I really loved that one story wise but I feel like, like I said action wise this one is the top of all of them just where they've gotten to and how much crazier they're going and I really can't wait to see what they do with the fourth film which they just announced I think it's coming out in like 2021 so really looking forward to seeing you know where the series goes but anyway though guys let me know in the comments below though what you guys thought of John Wick chapter 3 if you guys got to see that this weekend or what movies uh, you saw this past weekend if you guys got to see anything into Best Buy we go but in here though they have only one copy left of the How to Train Your Dragon exclusive steelbook one and that's a really cool steelbook for this one that one's $34.99 for that and it's a 4k edition and their standard um, you know 4k one is uh, $29.99 and then their standard blu-ray is $24.99 let's look on the other side though they're actually wait a minute, there is another uh, How to Train Your Dragon down here but this is the first movie so I don't know if this one just came out today this steelbook or that one's been out before or not let's see if the other side and then the other things over here yeah they have the upside here for $22.99 and then uh, isn't it romantic is $22.99 here as well and they have trading paint here and that one's uh, $17.99 and over here, though, they have a little standee as well for Hit or Train Your Dragon. And the, four, the part two came out on uh, 4K. That one's $17.99. They don't have any of the um, the uh, steelbooks over here, though. But the actual section over here, though, is real picked over. There's like a whole ton of empty spots. And don't see anything else, though, different over here, though, as far as I can tell. So anyway, though, guys, that's all for my DVD Blu-ray Tuesday shopping video today. Like I always say, if you guys enjoy these shopping videos, definitely give this video a thumbs up. Also, in the comments below, let me know, you know, what you guys picked up on DVD Blu-ray or 4k if you guys picked up anything today also be sure to as well let me know what you guys thought of all the new dvds and blu-rays and 4ks that are reviewed at the end of this video but anyway though guys now stay tuned for the brand new reviews and before we get to the reviews, I have some really cool FY exclusive Blu-ray steelbooks that FY sent over to let you guys know are available. Now these ones here, you guys can get in FYE stores as well as you guys can get them on FYE's website. Now the first one here is Pitch Black, which stars Vin Diesel. This is a movie that I always really love this movie. I think this was the first movie that I ever saw with Vin Diesel. I remember how much I loved this one when this first came out. Here's Vin Diesel's like um, glasses that he wears in the movie because his character can't like see the sun right because like he's made, he really can only only see well at night so you can kind of like hunt and in, in, in night because like this movie's dealing with these creatures coming and he can see them you know other people can't that's actually a really cool movie i like the sequels as well here's a look though at the back of the you know the, the backdrop of the uh of the uh steel book here but um like i said i always really like this movie this one here is probably my favorite of the steel books this one has a really cool like super glossy look to this one and i put this sticker here just to say because it, it was an fy exclusive but it's for the godzilla the, the 2014 film i'll show you what it lies a little look inside at this one as well. I'm really looking forward to seeing the new Godzilla movie which is coming out. But here's a little look though at the back here, the back image on this one, which is like these planes over the city. Another look at the at the Godzilla and like a look on the side here. The other one was, um, you know, uh, King Kong, which was Peter Jackson's King Kong. It's another one. I only ever saw this movie one time. I saw this one in theaters, and I remember liking this one when I saw this. This has on here, though, the, uh, you know, theatrical version as well as the extended version of the film. 
here's a little look inside at this one. Like I said, just want you guys know that these ones were available at FYE, and you guys can get the, like I said, these ones in store as well as on FYE's uh, website. And the first one I got here is from Shout Factory. This is one I just finished watching now. It's a really, really well done movie here called A Dark Place. This is essentially though about this guy who drives the garbage truck in this small town. He's somebody who's like kind of friends with everybody, kind of waves to people. And there's one kid though that he, you know, always waves out the window at this guy. And he's kind of friends with him and everything. And the one day, though, that at night, this guy, though, goes over to his uh, daughter's house to see his daughter. And she's on Facebook. And he sees a post on her Facebook that's this one that's the, the older brother of this kid that, you know, he's friends with and always waves at and everything. And it's the, the older brother wrote, uh, has anyone seen my brother? He's gone missing. I don't know where he is and stuff like that. And he's kind of wondering. And, and the very next day, this kid that he, you know, was wondering where he was and that wasn't waving at him the one day is found, you know, dead in this creek. And he's kind of wondering what had happened. He goes over to talk to the mother, say he's really sorry to hear what had happened. But then the mother says something to him that really gets him kind of wondering, like, what, what's going on here? Because the mother's like, I, I don't believe that he would have drowned out there. This is this would not happen. You know, my, my son is scared of ever leaving the house. He will never go anywhere without me. He wouldn't just wander off in, you know, go out into the woods and drown like that and have an accident or anything like that happen to him. It, there's something weirds going on here. And basically, though, this guy... The truck driver, you know, who drives the garbage truck, he becomes obsessed with trying to figure out exactly what had happened because he becomes starting to, like, kind of doing his own investigation because the investigation on this kid was kind of like a case closed kind of thing. They just looked at it as an accident. There was no no autopsy was done or anything. But he's going around, like, talking to, like, the kid's doctor and he's going around, like, investigating all these kind of things, trying to get to the bottom of, you know, what, you know, had happened to this kid. And, like, because, like I said, he kind of is convinced convinced that there may be more to this story and it was actually a really really well done uh you know drama about this guy trying to get to the bottom of what had happened and like you know really really well done all around one thing i thought was really cool too was uh griff first um who i know who was the director of um you know uh, ghost shark which i was in and he also produced haunted high he's in here and he has a really really good role in this film as one of the cops kind of talking to him and trying to tell him, to tell him like you, you know shouldn't you know nothing can be done unless there's evidence and stuff but i thought it was really cool to see him in this movie this has on here though a making a feature and a trailer but one i would definitely recommend you guys check out the next one here is from shout factory and this is from the uh, from shout factory as well and this is from the shout select line it's a movie here called earthquake this is one i had never seen before but i had actually you know at universal studios florida they used to have the earthquake kind of show that you would go to where it was like a show where they would do like um you know have scenes from the movie earthquake and they would kind of show how the effects were done and like they would have the audience like kind of come up and they would like have it like the building fell over or they jumped off over the building onto this mat there's kind of like a special effects show with like they showed sound effects and stuff but they were using um this movie as the original basis and then they changed it a couple years like years later and then it was with christopher walken now the thing is totally gone but then you would go th at the end and you'd ride in this kind of like subway and then uh, had have like an earthquake scene around you and the subway was all falling everywhere and everything you can still see that subway scene thing though in the universe or tour in uh, you know California, they still have that on the tram tour, but um, like I had never actually seen the movie before. So it's really cool to see this. And this has on here, though, two different versions of the film. It has the theatrical version as well as the extended version, which was the what, the NBC uh, two-night event telecast version. And because that was like they took the movie and, you know, spread it over two nights and they added some extra scenes and stuff. I think it's like about like 40, 20, no, it's 20 minutes longer of new stuff that was added to, in order to make it long enough to have it play over two different nights. But essentially, though, this is all about, it's following around a whole bunch of different people, Charles Hessen's the star of the film though but like uh, Walter Matthau's in this movie playing this kind of like um drunk guy at the bar there's all these different character actors and stuff that pop up in this movie but essentially though it's about this horrific earthquake that comes but it's like what leads up to it and it's kind of following around this one woman who's going to this acting audition um then the, the charlton heston's character and then like i said it's all these different characters but then it's leading up to uh this horrific earthquake and the earthquake scene in here is insane like especially for the time you could see how this would be picked to be a universal show like showing how the effects 
effects were done because of the time you know this was from 1974 these in, uh, these effects in here were like insane there was all these kind of stuff when they were having like these miniatures and then like big sets that they built and like things falling over and things crashing and everything but it also deals too with like um kind of them investigating like um like they're like the people like the weather people are kind of noticing there's like stuff that's like looking as if an earthquake's going to come because they have like these kind of mini kind of earthquakes that are kind of starting and then it leads into this horrific earthquake like i said it is an insane insane sequence that goes on in this one and it was like i said it was really really well done i really like this one this was actually a really really fun kind of like like i said like a natural disaster kind of film you know um it has on here, though, a brand new 2K scan from the original film elements for both versions of the film. So the, for the the, you know, the uh, theatrical version as well as the NBC Two Night version. Also has on here, though, uh, some uh, new scoring disaster, the music of the earthquake, as well as painting disaster, the artwork of, of the film, as well as the sound of disaster, which is the Ben Burt disgusting the sense around. Because it was done in a sense around, kind of like a super surround sound kind of format. And I was reading, too, they had like... Um, like they would like people who watched it at home they would like tell they would broadcast like it through the radio as well so you could kind of you know have like a surround sound kind of stereo experience back then has on here the theatrical trailer tv spots radio spots uh, audio interviews on here with the cast still galleries uh, posters and lobby cards behind the scenes and it's also a two disc set so the one disc is the theatrical version and the other disc is the extended television version but a really really cool like i said natural disaster movie here if you guys have not seen this one uh, the next one here is from uh, lion's gate and this is also an A24 title. And this is a movie here from Gaspar Noel, Noel called uh, Climax. And this stars uh, Sophie Potella, you know, who's in the Mummy remake. Uh, she was in Atomic Blonde. She's been in a bunch of different movies. And this is a, a, an absolutely insane movie that was so well done. It's one of my favorite movies in a long time. Because I like these kind of movies that are really, really out there and just like really crazy. And it's essentially though about this um this dance troupe that is they're basically practicing there it's it's essentially it's all set in this kind of their practice uh, dance space where they're practicing like their routines and everything and they're kind of like um they have like food out and they have punch and everything but what ends up happening though is somebody uh spikes the punch with this drug with um you know LSD in the punch and they you know they're all like drinking it and stuff and they don't know that this have any idea that this has happened so it's kind of going throughout the night about them drinking this stuff and then they're they're all starting to kind of get like paranoid and getting like weird from it and that's what right when the, they're start the signs of this happening to them is when the movie really picks up and becomes like absolutely absolutely insane the one thing that's really cool too is in the movie it starts off like with this tv screen and it's like the the, the dancers kind of getting interviewed and kind of like talking about themselves and everything and like on the side are like vhs's of like um the movies that were like inspiring this film it has like ones for suspiria and a number of different ones and like all the ones that were, were kind of what were the inspiration for this movie it also has like really really great music and like these the the choreography of like these dance scenes with the music and everything was so well done but it is an absolutely intense movie where it's like just one of these kind of movies where like I said it just gets worse and worse and worse and worse and goes like absolutely insane it's just kind of like an absolutely like the one of the most insane things I've seen in a long time just the way everybody gets in this it's one of those ones you guys have got to watch you know it's in French though right? like pretty much 90% of it's in French but it's one of those movies I did not have a hard time like reading it because some movies with their subtitles you know sometimes it can be like hard to pay attention and stuff which with certain movies not everything but if it's something that i'm it's not kind of holding my attention sometimes it can be a little bit difficult to like pay attention and stuff this one was not at all like that this is one of those movies you're like glued to the screen just because of what's happening this has on here though a making of uh, the film as well but highly recommend you guys check this one out and the next one i got here is from lion's game it's a movie here called a vigilante which stars olivia wilde i thought olivia wilde though did a really really good job in this movie it's a very very different kind of role for her from the other kind of movies that i've seen her in and the kind of parts I've seen her in essentially though this is about her character who is going around and helping women who have been battered and like you know have been beat, beaten her, her terribly by their boyfriends or their husbands and her character though has been through these things in her past as well and it's kind of about her she's been, like been training and going through all this boxing and all these kind of trainings and stuff because what she does is she goes around and helps these women that have had these horrible things happen to them and she kind of like for example like one of the in the beginning of this movie there's this one woman who's 
husband is terribly abusive and he, he won't leave and she doesn't know what to do and like if he leaves that she's not going to have any money and she's not going to be able to survive or anything like that so she kind of comes into the house Olivia Wilde's character and her character kind of changes her looks and appearances and stuff like that but she goes in there and basically like beats him up terribly and says you're going to leave you're going to sign these documents which is like signing over money to the husband you know the husband's money to her like and he only he so she gets like 70 percent and she's like if you come by again I'll kill you and you know you never talk to her again you never come to this house again and that's essentially what it is is her character goes to like meetings for battered women and kind of kind of looks around and sees anybody that she can help and then like her name kind of gets passed around and her information and things like that and it's kind of if, and if then if she finds somebody she will help them and you know try and get rid of the husband or try and help the situation and some things like that but like I said really really interesting movie here and like I said a really really different role for Olivia Wilde I thought she did a really really good job in this movie this one has though a feature out on the movie on this one and the next one I got here is from Lionsgate as well it's a movie uh, starring Steven Seagal called uh, General Commander this is basically though about uh, Steven Seagal's character who's in the CIA and this movie starts off though with him and like his team getting interviewed and they're like saying to him you know do you know what you did you didn't you were not supposed to have done this and you went in there and you did this and this happened to this person he's basically being questioned it kind of cuts back and forth between the questioning and stuff throughout this movie and it's basically he went and did something that he shouldn't have done technically in the eyes of the CIA because they like did not give him the orders to do it but what ends up happening though is in this beginning of this movie though him and his team I believe it was in they were in Bangkok and they were on this mission to bring down this mob boss this bad guy and Basically, though, it went horribly wrong, and one of the team members ends up getting killed. And like Steven Skull's character, like sees the whole thing happen with the team, and like it's basically though about him trying to bring down and get that guy. But then the CIA is like giving him all these troubles, and it's, it's basically about him kind of going and forming with his team, like this rogue group when he's kind of going around. Because this movie deals like as well with like organ harvesters and that kind of stuff, and he's trying to go and like bring down these groups and kind of you know take them down. But yet at the same time he's going against the, you know his bosses and the other you know CIA heads and the CIA like going over what they're saying to do and like I said he's going in this rogue with his own team and doing his own stuff trying to bring down these like terrible guys and also get the other guy that this mob boss and all these kind of things. It's actually if you guys are fans of Steven Seagal though it was a really fun movie here. Like I said this one is called uh, General Commander. The next one here is from the Criterion Collection. This is a movie I remember so much when this one first released. I remember. Um, I don't know if it was the when it first released, but I remember seeing it when it was like on DVD, and I remember like that. Like the first time I ever saw it was I, I I bought it in when I was away in Florida at Virgin Records. I always remember buying it there. But there's a movie here called uh, Funny Games. This is a absolutely intense, intense uh, home invasion movie. They made a remake to this movie as well, which is actually pretty decent as well. But no way near, no, is near as you know good as the original movie. This is basically though about this family that's at this vacation house, and it's these two guys come to the house, and they kind of like they're acting kind of like normal guys, like kind of preppy, real, you know, real like normal looking guys. But they're you know basically come into the house, and they like they're basically horrific. Like they 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 come in there, and they're like doing horrible stuff to the family, and it's like this absolutely insane, brutal movie, and like they're putting what they're putting them all through. And what's happening to them and it's like and like, if you guys are a fan of like home invasion movies and I feel like this is the kind of movie too that like inspired stuff like The Strangers and some of those kind of movies because this is like an earlier on because this one is from, like it's said 1997 but it is an intense absolutely intense really well acted uh, film here but this has on here though a brand new 2K digital restoration which supervised by the director on this one looks really really good here it has on here though new interviews with um, the director and one of the actors on this this one, new interviews with a film historian Alexander Harworth, as well as a press conference from the 1997 Cannes Film Festival featuring the director and, and the, uh, two of the actors on this one, as well as a trailer. And also has an uh, essay by Roger Ebert in this one as well. I'll show you guys a look inside at the booklet for this one kind of opens up like this like I said it has an essay in here with Roger Ebert but if you like I said if you guys like really intense home invasion movies like I said there was a, was the remake with Naomi Watts uh, and like I said that one was pretty good as well but no way near as good as the original one this is absolutely a must watch and the next one here is from Universal and DreamWorks and this is How to Train Your Dragon The Hidden World this is the third and final film in the How to Train Your Dragon trilogy if you guys don't know this series it's basically though about this Viking who has this dragon who's like a rare dragon they don't believe that there's any other 
of the type of dragon that he has. This is like in a world too with his other dragons and everything. But he ends up discovering though that they find another dragon that they come across that's just like the same type of dragon that he has. This is essentially, though, about him. You know, he had heard about from his father years and years before, and it had always been like legends about this whole world of all these dragons, where it's all the dragons living together, and it's this really great place and everything. And essentially, though, he's trying to go on this journey to try and find this uh, dragon world. There's also this bad guy, though, who wants to kind of, like, destroy the dragons, and he wants to try and get to this world as well, because he has plans of, like, getting rid of all the dragons and everything, and kind of ruining everything. But it's a really, really well-done film. Um, if you guys are fans of this series, though, definitely 100% worth checking out. On here, though, there's a whole bunch of different features. This has on here uh, alternate opening, uh, two short films, uh, deleted scenes, uh, Dragon Sleep Chronicles, some featurettes on this one, as well as the uh, Asteroids Dragon World Trilogy in 60 seconds, a commentary track on this one. But 4K-wise, though, I always think, though, when it comes to 4K, animation is some of the stuff that, to me, always looks really, really good on 4K, because this is a very, very bright, vibrant film that really, really benefits so much in 4K, you know, like the Dragon World they're trying to get to and everything, and some of the, just the, the effects and just the whole look of this movie really, really benefits on, you know, with 4K. So if you guys have 4K capacities, this is one I would highly recommend you guys check out in 4K. Just a really, really fun film. One of those films, too, that's not, not just for kids. I feel like adults would really like this one as well. And the next ones here are from Movie Zing, and these ones are both releases of Lionsgate titles. And these are uh, both Burn On Demand Blu-ray releases from Lionsgate. Lionsgate just started doing Burn On Demand releases for titles. They were only ever released on DVD before. This is a movie that Ike Bernhardt's directed and stars in, as well as Tiffany Haddish, called The Oath. This is a movie that I really, really liked. I felt like it was a really, really underrated movie. Not a lot of people saw, and one that I would highly recommend you guys check out. It's one of those movies, too, that I wasn't sure when I saw this originally if I was going to like it. It was such such wasn't sure. But then I really, really got into this and thought it was a really, really original, a different movie. But it's essentially, though, set in this kind of alternate universe where you have to sign this document where you you know you don't have to but it's like mostly everybody is and they really want everyone to sign them but you have to you know sign these documents that basically pledge your allegiance and your oath to the you know the president and like what he says and what he does and you have to pretty much agree with it and you can't really cause any grief about it and you have to just sort of say okay if he says it you got to do it and you got to agree with it and you know and it sets during Thanksgiving and like Ike Bernhardt's his family's all over his parents and everything his brother and it becomes this whole big thing at Thanksgiving giving because like he doesn't want to sign this and he's like arguing with his parents and like going why aren't you doing this and you know some of the people he thinks you know aren't signing it then they did but essentially though these two guys come over from the government one of them is played by John Cho and he basically is like they're there kind of to kind of strong arm Ike Bernhardt's character to sign the documents and like to pledge you know his allegiance to everything and he doesn't want to do it and things go really, really bad, and it's one. It becomes one of these really like dark comedy films where like it becomes that he gets in this sort of like Bernhardt's character gets in this situation, and, and everyone at the house does as well, where they don't know what they're gonna do, and things just continuously get worse and worse and worse. Like I said, I really like this movie. This has on here though a bunch of different features. It has deleted scenes, behind the scenes featurettes on this one, photo gallery, and a theatrical trailer. But like I said, these are burn on demand releases, burn on demand uh, Blu-ray releases. And Lionsgate just started doing these ones. But so I think it's cool, though, that they're putting out Blu-rays of ones, like I said, they were originally only on uh, DVD before. The next one here is a Burn On Demand Blu-ray as well from Lionsgate. And um, this is a movie here called Lifelike. This is basically, though, about this couple. And, you know, the boyfriend, his... Um, father just had died and you know he kind of was getting money from from his father you know kind of to pay the rent and kind of just like sort of like money just to pay certain things that he needed you know help with and everything but the father was somebody who owned this you know corporation and had so much money and basically though when he died the father died he kind of came into all this money he became like the head of this company moved into the father's house this huge mansion but his girlfriend though played play by Addison Timlin she doesn't this whole thing is really new to her like this idea of having all this money and this this huge house and they have like maids there and people who help with things and all kinds of stuff in the garden and you know she's like really uncomfortable with all of it like having all these people kind of like helping make the food and all this and she doesn't like it at all so she basically fires everybody and he's like well why did you do that how will we take care of this enormous property cutting the grass doing all this stuff but basically though he comes to find out that you know the father bought stake in this company that like was designing you know 
know, cyborg robots. They were like totally lifelike, look exactly like human beings. And, you know, and, and they say that these will help. So like he, you know, help around the house and stuff. So they end up getting these robots that are like sort of experimental robots. And they, they get one of the robots, which is this guy help around the house but it ends up becoming this weird kind of like stuff that's going on between them and the robot and like the robot is like acting a little odd too the way he's acting this is actually a really really interesting movie with some really interesting stuff that happens like really like stuff I was totally not expecting this is definitely one like I said as well a really interesting one this one has on here though a bunch of different uh, cast and crew interviews as well as a trailer gallery on this Next one here is from ITN uh, Distribution. It's a movie called Death Day. I like the cover on this one. This one was basically, though, and also the cool image here on the back, but this is basically, though, about this um, this girl whose father was kind of like an archaeologist kind of guy and was, like, exploring, and he ended up, like, finding this piece that was, like, this sort of like an amulet on, like, a stick thing, I guess you'd say, and, like... um. He, ba he basically, though, like, ended up making this deal essentially with the devil, and there's like these sort of pentagrams on the wall, and it's kind of like once all the three pentagrams, I think it was like four or five of them, once they disappear, then like it, like all hell will break loose, or something like that. But basically, though, this girl goes, when she finds out the father had died, you know, she goes to the to the house and kind of starts clearing things out, and the, they also go, she goes to like, um, the house also has like all this production equipment and everything, and like it was kind of reminding me of the place where they filmed that new Tommy Wiseau movie that he acted in I was thinking I was like nah it's, I don't think it's the same place but it kind of looked like it with his gait I kept thinking that when I was watching it but they, she basically goes there and she's kind of looking around the house for money and different things that she can kind of take and you know to drive to she wants to leave and go to Vegas but essentially she goes in there and finds this amulet in the safe and then she kind of gets stuck in this loop and she gets herself stuck in this in this building you know and then she's like people coming after her and it's these crazy characters that are like the strangers kind of coming after her and trying to kill her and then it becomes like all sorts of things that are happening to her all in this location it's actually a really really crazy movie and all these kind of she basically opened up a door to hell with all kind of problems happening to her but I actually thought this was a pretty cool movie and the next one here is from Unobstructed View it's a movie here called Lords of Chaos this is one I was really looking forward to seeing this is from the director who also directed the movie Spun and he's directed a lot of other movies as well and tons and tons of music videos but I especially love Spun that's like a great underrated movie this one though highly recommend you guys check this out it's a really really cool well done movie it's very very dark subject matter though this one here is the uncensored director's cut because when this one released in theaters there's a release you know in limited theaters it was released in an R-rated cut this one here is the uncensored version of the movie but this is essentially though about the uh, the very first or said to be the very first Norwegian uh, black metal band uh you know, uh, mayhem which was created by in the movie you know it's played by Rory Culkin's character who was like the the creator of this group and it was essentially this movie was about his character you know um, this is also based on a true story about his character though trying to put together this band and kind of start the whole like you know this type of music and it's uh, essentially though him looking for like the singer and you know the singer is played by uh, Jack Kilmer's character and then like something happens with him and you know it's I, I don't want to ruin too much about this movie because you guys have not seen this but this band though had lots and lots of controversy around it because of things that were, they were involved in they were involved in these church burnings which um Emery Cohen's character who's in this other band he you know you know is kind of like this person who was starting you know um these church burnings but he kind of came into mayhem and it was like, like i said there's all kind of stuff going on with this group i don't really want to ruin anything that happens in this one or spoil anything if you guys have you know if you guys don't know the story behind mayhem and like i said all the stuff that they were involved in sky fiera is also in this movie as well but this one was so well done you know i you know story wise and everything and like i said i had known some about this band before i remember i, I saw like a documentary a couple years back that like it, talked a little bit about this band and like some of the church burnings and that kind of stuff that was going on at this time but you know it's a very very you know brutal take on the violence and stuff though that they you know really well done like the effects and everything in here but it is extremely like realistic you know with, with what they are showing and everything the way everything was done but it was so well done this is one like I said I highly recommend you guys check this one out if you guys have seen this one though let me know though uh, what you guys thought of the movie and this one has in here though the blu-ray as well as the DVD in this one now, the next ones here are from Eureka Entertainment now these ones here are all uh, region B locks 
So keep in mind, these ones are Region B releases. So you guys would have to have an all region uh, Blu-ray player to play these ones or be, you know, in the UK with a, you know, a Region B player. So like I said, since these ones are all Region B releases. Now, the first one here is the brand new, uh, you know, Eureka uh, edition here of the movie Cujo, which I've always loved this movie, but this is such a great release. I absolutely love the cover on this one. If you guys have never seen this movie, it's about this dog that is bit by this bat. It's like a rabid bat. And the dog, you know, because the dog is like this nice dog, but it, it gets bit and becomes ravenous and crazy. And it's about, you know, uh, Dee Wallace's character and her son that are going to this gas station and like, you know, service station. And they end up, you know, going there and this rabbit's dog is there kind of like attacking and coming after them. So they kind of lock themselves into the car and it's basically this dog is out front come, like scratching the door like crazy and coming after them and everything. And it's them trying to figure out exactly what they're going to do. It is like a totally intense movie. I've always really liked this movie. I remember this is one of those movies that always creeped me out like of like worried about like a dog like this coming after me. And I remember once like as a kid I used to always like um, like elementary school and stuff I used to like go on walks and ride my bike in the neighborhood and everything and like one time I had this one scary dog come after me and sort of like chase me a little bit and I was like a little heavy kid and this dog was going after me luckily enough someone called the dog away but like I always was like kind of worried I'd have like a Cujo, Cujo kind of situation happen to me but yeah you know, but this one here that was a two disc a limited edition release here the limited edition one is the disc two that has a um, Q&A with D Wallace which is um a 96 minute uh, Q&A from Monster Fest 2015 as well as a new interview with critic and author uh, Kim Newman but on disc one though it has a whole bunch of features it has on here a new and exclusive uh, late, uh, uh, you know commentary track on here with the author of nope nothing wrong here the making of Kudro a new 40 minute interview with D Wallace a new interview here um, with the composer with 35 minute interview interview with the stunt man on this one new interview with the stunt woman New interview with casting director, uh, inter new brand new interview with visual effects artist, new interview with special effects designer Robert Clark, uh, new interview with dog trainer Tessa Miller, uh, Dog Days, The Making of Cujo, an archival documentary. But in here though, also it has a different uh, cover on the Blu-ray. It's a two disc set, so it's one disc and then the, the bonus disc, which is the uh, exclusive, you know, limited edition features. There's also a booklet in here, which has a whole bunch of, um, you know, behind the scenes, uh, you know, stills from the movie, you know, artwork and everything. Because, you know, Cujo is based on a story by uh, Stephen King. But, you know, this is, like, like I said, if you guys have never seen this movie, a really crazy must watch movie, one I always liked. And just such a great new, you know, ultra special edition release here from Eureka. The next one's here, like I said, I want to let you guys know that these ones are available they sent these over to let you guys know about this one here is from Eureka's Masters of Cinema series like I said keep in mind this is region B locked as well it's a movie here called uh, the right the, the white reindeer here and this one here also has reversible artwork so it has a different uh, artwork on the, uh, uh, the on the alternate side here but on here feature wise this has a brand new um, you know a blu-ray from 4k restoration completed in 2016 by the National Audio Audiovisual Institute of Finland also has on here feature length audio commentary track by film critic uh, Kat Ellinger as well as um, a documentary on here, like an audio essay talking about the portrayal of witches in Nordic uh, cinema, as well as in here a 1947 documentary short, uh, color test footage, uh, 1952 uh, Jesse, Jesse Awards uh, ceremony featurette on this one. Also here is a um, a Billy Wilder film called um, One Two Three. You know Billy Wilder directed uh, some like a like it hot. They also just released a Billy Wilder film, uh, I think like last month. For, you know, Eureka Cinema did as well. Also, that you know, he made The Apartment. This one here, though, uh, feature-wise, this one has on here brand new exclusive interview with film scholar uh, Neil Sinyard, as well as a feature-length audio commentary by film historian Michael S uh, Sullinger, as well as a collectible booklet. I don't know if there was, there was, there was, I see if there was a booklet in that one as well, but this one has a booklet which has like some poster artwork in here for the movie, uh, some stills and that kind of stuff in here. So really cool release here. Like I said, one of the guys know that this one was a Available. Let's check though. I think I don't know if there was a, a booklet in this one or not. Let me see. Oh, yes, there was a booklet in here for the white uh, reindeer as well. So there was a booklet which had some pictures from the movie and all kind of like um, essays and that kind of stuff about the production. 
And the last one from Eureka Entertainment is a movie here called uh, The Song of Bernadette. And this one has in here uh, reversible artwork as well. And this one here has uh, feature-wise, it has the Watch the Film with Original Overture, which is a six-minute overture, as well as a uh, commentary track on here with Edward, uh, G., uh, Edward Z. Epstein, author of uh, Portrait of Jennifer, a biography of Jennifer Jones, as well as on here the theatrical trailer on this one. Like I said, just want you guys to know that these ones were available from Eureka Entertainment. The next one here is from uh, Worldwide uh, Multimedia. And this is uh, 60 Seconds to Die 2. Now the thing that's really cool about this one is this is an anthology film where it's each segment is 60 seconds long and it's all about like the characters within 60 seconds will die. You know, it's kind of like different crazy different stories and everything. But what's cool about this one was I was, um, you know, I, me and Danny, you know, Cinestalker from YouTube, we have a segment on here and we had a segment on the first one as well. We were doing like a, in the first one it was like a character was like, um, daring each other to do something and Danny ends up choking on this I think it was like a sandwich or something but in this one um, it's, it's it's shot it's at a, a, a mall and I'm getting like stalked by Danny and Danny's like following me and everything and he's like coming out like coming after me and stuff so like we have a segment in here so that was really cool to have a segment in in this one if you guys are interested though like I said this is 60 seconds to die and it's all like um it's about an hour and 20 minutes long and it's all different like I said uh you know 60 second short films all about people dying within that amount of time but definitely check it out though if you guys want to see me and Danny's uh segment on there and the next one here is from Cleopatra Entertainment it's a movie here called The 27 Club this movie though it kind of deals with the lore of you know The 27 Club which is basically it this one mainly focuses on uh, you know musicians but you know The 27 Club club is also actors as well where when they turn 27 there's a lot of like really well-known musicians and actors that have died at 27 and it's basically though about this guy who was doing a documentary kind of focusing on this because someone that he knew and kind of had a slight connection to that was this popular um, rock star he died on his 27th birthday and that's kind of what encourages him to do this documentary to kind of like look into the whole thing and kind of see what he can figure out because some of the people he knew as well knew this guy and had connections to him and everything and he's doing the documentary on it he goes to where they have like a remembrance thing outside, like a eulogy kind of thing, and they had like pieces out there to remember the guy, but he finds this book, this sort of like um, old, weird looking like Necronomicon kind of book. And of course he starts like looking at it and um, like asking all sorts of questions. And it's like dealing with like, um, Essentially, though, in the beginning of this movie, though, you see this guy who, who died at, 20, at 27, the musician, and you saw, like, kind of this dem demonic kind of character kind of pull him into this mirror and everything. But by him doing this documentary, the guy doing, who's doing the documentary, he kind of, like, and find this book, he kind of is, like, having some these kind of things sort of coming after him, and he's starting to see weird things, and people that are kind of connected to the guy are also having things happen to them. And, you know, uh, Todd Rundgren acts in this movie as well as, like, the professor, and he's in here, too, like, talking about these CDs and stuff like oh, we're talking about records and saying don't you don't want to want, read listen to this one you gotta check out these ones but it also but in here though it has a blu-ray a dvd as well as a soundtrack cd in this one like i said it has like i said it has the uh the soundtrack the blu-ray and the dvd and this one here is from cleopetra entertainment as well it's a movie one of the guys know was available called room 37 the mysterious death of johnny thunders this is about johnny thunders who is in the new york dolls and you know when i think of the new york dolls though the lead singer of the new york dolls you know i was always a huge fan of him and you know he still to this day acts here and there and he still does music as well but you know he was in like things like Scrooge and like a bunch of different movies he was like the the, the uh, taxi driver in Scrooge but he was in, like in lots and lots of movies but I was always a huge fan of him but he was like the lead singer of the New York Dolls but this is about Johnny Thunders you know who was in the New York Dolls and there was like you know this kind of is done with a um, you know a horror kind of aspects to this vibe in this movie it's kind of like looking at the, the way that he because he, like I said he died with these mysterious circumstances and they don't really know for sure exactly what had happened and like because they, they it's just a lot like a lot of mystery to the whole thing but he kind of his character though you know when he you know was trying to get off drugs he ended up going to uh, New Orleans to stay in this hotel and it's kind of like about him trying to get off the drugs and what was happening to him and all these kind of crazy things that he's seeing and going through and everything like I said just want you guys know that this one was available but here though it has the blu-ray the DVD as well as a soundtrack CD on this one as well like I said it has the um, 
the Blu-ray here, and then the DVD and the soundtrack. The next one here, though, is from uh, Full Moon. And this one is one that I had never seen before. It was actually a really fun movie. This was from, um, let's see if it says the year, 1979. This is the 40th anniversary edition here. A, you know, special edition of The Day Time Ended. This is a really fun, really fun movie about this family that's going out to this new house that they just had built. I think it was the grandfather had built it or the one's father had built it. And it's this kind of house, this sort of modern kind of house for the time that's out like in the middle of nowhere in the desert. But like in the very beginning of this movie, you see this kind of like these spaceships kind of coming over this um, this house and they get out there and the one girl, though, the one, like, younger daughter there, she's, like, seeing this weird little, like, ship thing out in the out front of the, you know, the barn where they have the horses and everything. And then, like, um, she's kind of noticing and, like, weird things are going on. And then at night, these, like, little spaceships come down and these tiny little alien creatures, and they're done with these really cool, classic, you know, uh, stop-motion effects. That's the one thing with Full Moon is I love their, you know, the, the stop-motion effects they've done, you know, with, like, in the Ghoulies and all that kind of stuff. That's one thing I always love. I love stop-motion effects. That was old-school kind of effects, and they were always so good at doing that kind of stuff. And I love when they do that in their newer movies as well, and they have old-school stop-motion and puppets and all that kind of stuff and this one is basically though you know these aliens kind of come to the house and, and the, the family's trying to figure out exactly how they're going to get away and everything what they're going to do and they also have like these little like i said they're mini ships and stuff but it's, this has on here though a commentary track on here as well as rare photo gallery but this is a really really fun movie really really great transfer on this one Next one here, this one was from 1987. It's a movie here called uh, Slave Girls from Beyond Infinity. This is kind of... Um this one, I'm just covering the one thing so no one said anything, but there's nothing bad or anything on it. But this is basically, though, kind of like... Um, the um, what was it? The dangerous game, which was like um, the movie. But I always think of the movie Surviving the Game or the movie The Pest. And this is basically though about these girls that ended up. They they were both like chained up in this uh, space prison, and they end up escaping. And they get all you know escape in this um, you know escape pod ship, and they end up crashing down on this weird planet where they're like found by this um, this kind of robotic creature, and they're taken back to. Um, the owner of it, and it's this like guy who seems like a regular looking kind of normal guy, but you know, there's something like off about him. And like they come to get in there and kind of come to realize that it's like I said, it's a surviving the game kind of thing where like he hunts people there and like keeps them as trophies and stuff like that. And it's like it becomes a, a nightmare of a situation. Like they escape from the one prison, now they have to figure out how they're going to survive on this weird planet with these sort of alien, not, not, not really aliens, but like robot kind of creatures on there and the guy coming after them and all sorts of kind of problems. With another really, really fun movie has on here though a tribute to Elizabeth Kitan as well as uh, original theatrical trailer and full moon trailers on this one the next one here is from wild eye releasing it's a movie called uh, don't look this is a like throwback 80s uh slasher film and it says it's like throwback to classics like friday the 13th the burning april fool's day you know it, it, um, that's what the movies that it kind of throws back to that style of it's basically about a group of these friends that go and stay at this um vacation house and of course though you know um it's kind of like a weird guy nearby in this like house nearby and it's essentially though them and the, you know in there you know and of course they, they notice this kind of weird place nearby and everything with this guy and everything and it's like it's one of those ones too where you're not sure exactly is it this weird guy or is it somebody else around there like who is it and the person is wearing this like crazy mask going around like after the people and like trying to kill them off and everything and it's just like I said a crazy throwback slasher movies I always like these real throwback old school style slasher movies this has on here though behind the scenes and trailers on this one this one here is from uh, unearthed films it's a movie called uh, a record of a sweet a record of sweet murder and this is basically though done found footage style because it's basically not exactly found footage but it's it is found footage but it's kind of like found news footage because it's about this woman who's you know anchor on the news who gets like invited to come into this house with this guy who is believed to have killed all these different people like the serial killer and she gets invited in to kind of interview him and talk to him and the news camera is kind of going so it's all done like through the news camera's footage and everything and she kind of goes in there and starts talking to this guy and like um 
it's essentially about him like saying like these crazy things about like why he did this and like if he does you know if he has if he does these certain amount of murders these people will come back to life and all these kind of crazy weird things that you know he's saying and he's saying he has to do this or bad things will happen and it's all this kind of stuff and it's really really an interesting well done you know found footage but like I said it's found footage but like through the news camera perspective on this one like I said this one has on here extras wise it has a still gallery and theatrical trailers on this one and the next one here is from Scream Team Releasing. It's a movie here called Murder Made Easy. This one also has a reversible artwork on this one. It has like a old school like 80s style cover for the reversible image. This one is kind of, here's the, this cover though. I really love, love this uh, image on this one. This is kind of like um, the movie that Cameron Diaz is in called The Last Supper. I believe that one is, one is what it was called. It has a similar vibe to this because this is about this couple who is inviting people over to their house for, for dinner. And the movie's like done in like courses, like what they're eating and everything, like first course, second course. But it's basically though about them inviting people over and they're like poisoning them and killing them and all these kind of things in all these different types of ways. So it's kind of the people coming over and then like having their, you know, the guests to come over and then like poison them in different ways and all this kind of crazy stuff. It's kind of like what they're all planning and like why they're doing this. Like I said, it definitely has that vibe to, you know, um, to like the movie The Last Supper. But on here though, it has a feature, feature wise, it has a commentary track on here, deleted scenes, uh, bloopers, rehearsal, rehearsal scenes, photo gallery, and trailers on this one. Like I said, this one is from Scream Team Releasing. And the next one here is from Monarch Home Entertainment. This is one I just want to let you guys know is available. It's a movie here called Eleven. This is a movie that's, it takes place right in the last hour of World War One, right when the war is just about to end. And it's basically these, these uh, soldiers who are in the, the trenches and they pre pretty much just have to to wait for one hour and they can finally go home and it's something too there's all these stuff of them like kind of thinking about like what they're going to do when they get home and like what their plans are and everything but of course though there's stuff you know the uh, the other side is firing at them and it's kind of about them trying to survive you know even and they have to like survive this last hour because the last hour is becoming this absolute nightmare of a thing for them and what they're going through and everything like I said just want you guys know that this one's available from Monarch Home Entertainment and the last one here I covered this up because it's like a ball gag and a mouse so no one says anything but it's a movie here called from break from breaking glass pictures called um motel mist this is basically though about, like i said it's not bad but just so no one says anything but it's basically though about this motel in um I think it was in, you know, it's in Bangkok, and it's essentially though follows around these four different people in this motel. It's like this guy who's bringing this girl there, this one guy. It's it's basically like the one guy who works at the motel, but like I said, it's four different people. And it's all sorts of um odd things going on in this motel and it's kind of like um one guy that's like kind of nuts there it's like it's basically though like really weird things are happening in this motel some strange like like i said it's kind of hard to explain some of it because it's a little bit like weird things happening but it's some really really odd out there stuff going on in this hotel it's making me think of the one um the new one recently uh the hotel royal or motel royal i can't always forget the name of the exact name of that one but it was kind of making me think of that a little bit about this like motel location where all sorts of weird out there things are going on and it's all like showing the different perspectives of what the people are doing there and everything but it has on here though behind the scenes of the cast and crew on this one uh, but anyway though guys that's all for the review portion of this video Thanks again for watching and subscribing.